Hello folks, this is Jamil Surfer Guns Truck Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona at the headquarters of Enlo Custom. How you doing, Marty? Good. Hey, Marty, I know we did this before and we're going to talk about um, changes that happen between, you know, upgrades that companies do to make products better. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that the previous product was bad. It just basically means that, oh, we found something to make it better and they slowly make inline changes that are somewhat you know, to the end user, it doesn't change too much. Mm -hmm. uh, that case is with uh, Luthayar with their Palm Handguard. And they have done a couple of minor changes to make things better. The first thing they change is the barrel nut. Originally, barrel nut was this one here, had vertical lines on it. Mm -hmm. Then they used this knurling. And then now they have this slot cut in it. So you can actually have set screws on it like these. And why are they doing that? They also added one more set screw instead of three that they had before. Now they have four. Mm -hmm. But why? Do you have one of these? Do you really need to upgrade it? Or... It depends on what you're doing with it. Yeah, that's right. Because I was thinking uh, PRS, mm -hmm. one of the reasons, mm -hmm. or three-gun shooting. Right. And you know how three-gun shooters abuse mm -hmm. their equipment. Mm -hmm. This guy's finished shooting rifle, and they just pitch it into a trash can. There's a trash bin in the in the course of fire that you pitch your rifle. I've seen rifles bounce off the trash bin and bounce back out, causing the disqualification of the shooter because there's, it's supposed to remain in the trash bin. But, yeah, when you take a rifle and you pitch it into a trash bin from four or five feet away, mm -hmm all that shock and on the quantity of rounds fired. Some of these courses of fire are 50, 60 rounds. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the original rifles, some of these guys were complaining that the uh, handguards were slipping out. So that's when they have the changes in right. the, in the knurling, and now they, they have the set screws. They, they beefed it up. Yeah, they, they beefed they, it up. Right. You know, every every manufacturer goes through their, their generations, right? I mean, most famously, we all think of the Gen 5 Glock at this point. I mean, they've, yeah. they've had five generations, right? Mm -hmm. The P Mag, the Magpul P Mag, has been through, what, three gens. And I mean, mm -hmm. you know, those are, those are just two big examples, but, uh, you know, Everybody, everybody finds some little upgrade or customer feedback. I mean, mm -hmm. you got the M and P 2.0, which was based a lot on customer feedback. Um, and for this thing here, I mean, you can see just the evolution of okay, well, if they were worried about their handguard slipping off, that, I mean, they've gone through two upgrades just on that that alone. And in which case, did you did you absolutely have to get rid of the first one? I, I'd say maybe if you were throwing it into a dumpster and, and expecting it to, to come back out again, but for the average user who just goes and shoots it at the range, you know, every once in a while, no, you, you don't need to, you don't need to make that change. But, you know, that's why sometimes I'll ask people, what are you doing with it? I mean, that, that's a fair question if you're, if you're saying, hey, I want to do something, well, what are you going to do with it? Uh, if you want it to be pristine, you know, if you're not going to throw it in a trash can. So you may not have to worry about it. If it's a safe queen or if it's just a gun that you just don't do all that much with, it, it isn't going to matter. If you, even if you go out and shoot it all the time, you know, if, if, if you're somebody who wants that abuse, though, if you want that ability to we would say, see something that's bomb-proof, right? Every company has gone through generations of stuff like this where they've upgraded stuff like this. And, and, and by making this even more secure than it ever was before, they're beefing it up and they're, they're, they're realizing that, okay, we can make improvements and every company really should be doing that anyway. Yeah, I, that's what I was mm -hmm. thinking. Yeah, every company should be improving on their products. Mm -hmm. And I think this is kind of cool because uh, this handguard, I had the original handguard, which is this one here. Mm -hmm. And it's the original. And I, t I tell you, I did use, if you can see all the scuff marks mm -hmm. and all the beat marks on it. Sure. It's, it was wrote hard and put up wet several times mm -hmm. and I had never had it come off. Right. And I had the original first generation one, this one here, with the straight lines. Mm -hmm. I never had it come off. And I know you installed them for me mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. And I tell you what, they are really, really sturdy. So I don't see a need for no. for you know upgrading if you don't need to. 
If you think you should, you, you can always call Luthayar and get the, the latest and greatest barrel nut. And here, Marty, we're going to discuss how the process. First thing is you take the handguard off, mm -hmm. then you take the muscle brake off, then you take the, uh, gas, the gas block off, the gas yes. block off and loosen the, the barrel nut. The yes. barrel nut. And then put the new barrel nut in mm -hmm. and tighten it three times, right? Yes, uh, you, you want to seat the threads, right? And you know, some people will say that, oh, you've done it once, you, you don't need to do it again. Not according to the technical data package assembly process. So when you back it off, you redo the process every single time. The receivers are usually made from 7075. The the handguards are made from 6061. So there there's a there's a toughness difference between the two. But I, I'd say most manufacturers make their stuff out of 6061, and it doesn't matter that much. You really want the receivers themselves made from 7075. Yeah. But um, and and actually mm -hmm. this you know being a little softer, it's not going to hurt it. I mm -hmm. mean I have. No bash the living snot of these <laughs> and shot them and shot them and that's shot them. It's still aircraft grade. That's the yeah. other thing. Yeah. yeah. And they are still as good. Mm -hmm. And then after you put the new handguard in, mm -hmm. I mean the new barrel nut in, excuse yes. me, you slip back the gas system mm -hmm. on it and then you put your muzzle, muzzle brake on. back yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And then your final step is that you yeah, we, we, we kind of tightened it, you know, we're, we assembled the whole thing and then we, we kind of, we, we started tightening in, in sequence around the little areas, yeah. right? But uh, it, uh, we didn't just tighten one all the way down and then go to the other. And the other thing is, is with these is that uh, the, uh, there's, these, there's these two ears that kind of stick out at the bottom. You don't want to just tension those until they shut. There's a, there's a reason why there's actually a gap built in there. Um, and so if you tension those down all the way, you're, you're just, you're, you're just stretching the aluminum, right? Yeah. In which case aluminum can break. So it, it, it's not, not to say that it, it, aluminum doesn't bend like steel, steel, you know, steel will bend, aluminum will, will shear. And, and when steel bends, sometimes you can bend it back. You can't bend back aluminum. Mm -hmm. now, once it's done, it's done. Once it's yielded, it, it's stressed, you know. So you don't goes. have to gorilla tighten these things. No, you really don't. You really don't want to. I don't have a torque spec off the top of my head but it, it's not a ton of pressure maybe within the 15 inch pounds but you'll notice you'll notice that as you tension them down um it, there's the gap is larger at the front than at the back right which means every time you tighten it down the line the back is always going to be a little easier right so you actually want to tension from the back to the front and you kind of check it a few times, but you know, you, you definitely don't want that completely closed. And then with the new set screws, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because that thing is there. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That, that thing, thing is that thing there. Is not this, this is like bomb proofing, mm -hmm. uh, bomb proof part. Yes, yeah. You actually took a bomb proof part like this one is, which mm -hmm. I think is one of the best handguards in the market yeah. for free, free float handguards. And then you made it even, even more bomb proof. Mm -hmm. You don't really have to buy the newest and greatest. I mean, if you want to, you can, of course. Mm -hmm. The guys at Luthayar are not going to mind selling you the part. <laughs> but I think it's a good idea to not to panic and not call a Luthayar. Oh, my God, my, you know, handguard is old. It's perfectly good. It is a perfectly good handguard. So, hey, Marty, thanks a lot for doing this first set change up mm -hmm. for us. And we'll come back with a new uh, project and uh, upgrade it. Okay. Well, thanks, buddy. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. And guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with us in these videos. And remember, stay healthy, stay safe, and have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.